All right, joining me now here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is Isabel Arthen. Isabel is a junior majoring in environmental studies at Mount Holyoke College. She is also a student organizer with Mount Holyoke's Divestment from Fossil Fuels campaign. She was also one of the funeral for our future protesters at the Trans Canada office in Westboro, Massachusetts, which you can find all about at funeralforourfuture.wordpress.com. Isabel, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so Isabel, um, I've seen a video of the protest that happened at the Trans Canada office, um, and it really was a, a very uh, eerie and solemn protest. Uh, it really was a very like kind of chilling video. Um, so why don't you just tell us all about what happened in Westboro, Massachusetts at the Trans Canada office? So it was a really powerful experience. We had 100 people, over 100 mostly students, some community members, grandmothers, clergy people come into this Trans Canada office in Westboro, Mass., and we staged a funeral for our future. So we marched in with a coffin saying a funeral elegy. We had a eulogy and a moment of silence that was very powerful as well and um, ended up staying in the building for a good half an hour, which was unexpected. Um, and then we were asked to leave by the police, and m- many of us left. Well, 25 of us sat down, handcuffed, and and refused. And uh, those people were arrested. So this is also the same office where uh, not that long ago, about a month and a half ago, that other uh, students actually super glued themselves together at this Trans Canada office again to protest the Keystone Pipeline. Exactly. This this was a follow up on the on the Westboro Eight who went there and and stayed for about three hours in that office, giving a message to Trans Canada that, that wherever they are, we will be. And this this escalation now that we had a hundred people in that office, I think reinforced that message and showed them that there is there's a lot of us um, in this movement who care about protecting our future and that. We'll keep coming. Absolutely, and, and it's it's again, uh, you know, after you know, you had the giant, you know, rally uh, forward on climate in, in in DC, which seemed to be a kind of a, a polite rally. Um, it, what what the truth is is that uh, that that people need to know is that there are. Uh, thousands, uh, tens of thousands of people who are in fact willing to go to the next step of actually doing civil disobedience, uh, be it at the White House, be it at uh, the Trans Canada offices, be it at, be it at the offices of, of uh, the companies that are going to be profiting off of this horrible pipeline. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think we're seeing, we're seeing a big surge in civil disobedience, especially among young people, because the thought of the future that we're inheriting um, if projects like the Keystone XL pipeline are approved, it's so much more terrifying than the prospect of going to prison. Um, so we're willing to put our, our bodies and sometimes our lives on the line to protect our futures and the future of you know, next generations. Yeah. So l- let me ask, I mean, uh, what exactly got you, I mean, involved in, in a protest like this? What, what was it that, that, that spurred you to action? Well, I've, I've always been an environmentalist. Um, and coming into into college, I never really knew how to get involved in the campaigns going on. And then um, Bill McKibben's article um, in Rolling Stone came out, and that really fueled me to take action on climate right now. So I got involved in divestment um, and started working with with organizations like 350 and Better Future Project and Students for a Just and Stable Future. Um, and started building this network of young activists who were making real change, and that's that's kind of what led me to to the protest on Monday. Mm-hmm. So, so was uh, did any trans? Did you actually see any Trans Canada executives or employees when you were doing this, or or how did that actually? How did the whole thing actually go? Why was? Do you think that the message was delivered to Trans Canada? I think the message was definitely delivered. They they were able to lock their doors before we actually made it into their office, um, but we were we were pretty loud in our singing, and they definitely were aware that we were there and saw us. Um, we also had while the arrests were being were being carried out, we had the rest of the protesters outside 
singing and chanting and holding fists up in solidarity. Um, and I think the Trans Canada office and all the other offices in the building were very aware of our presence.